Welcome to Make a Path Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and this is Q&A for Dead Living. If you don't know what Dead Living is, I got a playlist down below. It's a comic I am writing and I created, and James Milne is kicking ass doing the artwork. I keep saying that. People are probably thinking this is the same video they just saw. Uh, anyway, there's also an I up here. You can click that, and a drop-down menu will have the playlist for Dead Living. Let's get right into the questions. Will your project address what will become of our country's national parks? Yes, absolutely. Will there be a lot of character deaths? Absolutely. Is there only going to be America? No, there will not just be America. Definitely not. <laughs> I'm sure your story will be very different from The Walking Dead, but I've got to say the style looks so much like Charlie Adler's, so much so it could prevent people from reading your comic since they'd perceive at first glance a wannabe walking dead and therefore lack of originality. Well, here's the thing. I'm really hoping that the color will set it apart from the walking dead. And also, truth be told, again, like I mentioned in a previous video, if I just told the artist to do a different style, then people could, from, if you're fans of that other style, you could just turn around and say, hey, you're doing a style that um, so-and-so did. You know what I mean? So, and here's another thing. I've seen artists try to create this nice, unique, um, totally different style where they might make um, people's noses real weird or make triangles for eyes or something really funky. And a lot of that I feel like it goes overboard and tries to make such a unique style that it's actually distracting. There's a comic I really enjoy, but the style of the characters' faces are so damn distracting. Sometimes I really, really, really wish they would have done something different. And again, it's based on the style being pushed um, to such a unique extent. It's so distracting, it almost interferes with you know the enjoyment of reading the comic. So I'm not pushing my artist to do anything different. Um, this is the style he studied in, and since uh, we have it in color and not just black and white, that's part of the main thing giving me hope that once we see the, um, the finished color version, uh, we can look past it being just similar to The Walking Dead as far as the style is concerned. At least I hope so. Can I get this on Amazon or eBay? Chances are probably not, I mean, unless we sell it directly on eBay, so stay tuned for that. Unless somebody else buys in bulk or sells it on Amazon, I don't know. Just a little suggestion, The Walking Dead is too famous. Everything that connect or have similarity with them will easily make readers confused and put them out of focus, such as Twilight True Blood Vampire Diary. The title should change to something different. Represent another theme's spirit without any linking word will be better. Uh, yeah, you're talking about Dead Living as the title. That is not the title. Yet again, not the title. 100% we're not using that title. As far as the Twilight True Blood Vampire Diary, not sure where you're going with there, but I will disagree that when you're making a zombie genre movie, comic, show, you want the zombies unless you're specifically making changes like how The Last of Us did. You know what I mean? You don't want to make a zombie a vampire story and then say they don't have fangs, they don't drink blood, they don't fly, they're not burned by sunlight, and just make up something by saying they cut people and drink blood and live forever. I mean, then it radically changes what it is. It could be a vampire story, but a lot of those hardcore vampire fans that, or maybe not even hardcore, but the vampire fans that want the teeth and want the drinking of blood and want that romantic style to the vampires, they might be put off by those drastic changes. So again, I, I want to do a zombie genre, so there's gonna be certain similarities that are unavoidable. And The Walking Dead gets put on that pedestal now because of its popularity. Uh, before, when it was getting reamed out for um, being too much like The Night of the Living Dead, fans weren't raging saying, well, The Walking Dead should just stop because we have Night of the Living Dead. No, we're zombie fans, we want more. You know, as long as it's not a carbon copy of it, as long as they're trying to do something unique and original, give us that, you know what I mean? It's just like if you told Robert Kirkman he couldn't do a possession story. I mean, how silly would that be? If you tell someone 
uh, you can't make a zombie story because The Walking Dead is too popular, then you, there's other people can't do z zombie stories. They can't do vampire stories. They can't do a Frankenstein story. Well, uh, Robert Kirkman can't do Outcast because it's too much like Exorcist. You know what I mean? It's a fight either way. You're either going to like it or hate it. And I'm banking on the fans that are zombie fans that want more zombie material. It's, that's the easiest way I can look at it. Because I feel I definitely make changes uh, to make it different. You know, I go out of my way to make it different from The Walking Dead. Certain similarities that I'm not getting past, like a guy in the first issue, he has a sword. The way the story plays out, it's a logical progression of why he's using a sword. No, no, a sword, if you see what comes after that. I'm not changing that little thing just because Michonne has a sword in The Walking Dead. I'm not doing it. So in a nutshell, anything that is too much like it, yeah, I try to alter and change. Will the pages be full colored or black and white? Full color, we're gonna use black and white for previews. Hey Ronnie, does your comic take things from other notable story genres or is it mostly from well-known zombie genres? Uh, I answered this. I actually asked if you could be more specific and what things were you talking about. And I also put, um, I can try to make it as much as I can original and refreshing with a twist, but with as much story-wise already out there, there will always be unintentional similarities. But as far as differences, I'm definitely looking to make some differences uh, with this story. With it being online and all you saying you are looking for support, are you planning on making it possible for private donations to the project? Like if someone wanted to donate directly to you or the comic. That's a, that's a possibility. We weren't thinking about opening that up yet again until the first issue was done and if there was actually people out there who wanted to, you know? It's not something we were gonna um, set up to just do um, like a donation just for the comic until we had some amount. My only question is will you continue to write the story even if it doesn't get good ratings? Uh, yeah, I've talked about this previously. Did you ever consider making the story into a novel before deciding on a comic? Absolutely I did and I feel like me personally I do better with the script writing process in a movie form or a comic book form especially with the visuals. Uh, than I would ever do in a novel format. If the comic doesn't work out, would you consider turning this into a TV series? Um, no. <laughs> if the comic doesn't work out, there's no way in hell I'll ever be able to make it into a TV series because if it flops, it means that there's no fans out there that want it. So I would feel like there's no one you know, in the world that would want to pick that up into a TV series. Simple title equals zombie. No, not that simple. <laughs> is the twist that you talked about that no zombie story has done before zombie sex? Laugh out loud. Absolutely not. <laughs> I always thought it would be cool to have a zombie go in and out of consciousness before they completely turn. And then you asked if I ever thought about that. Yeah, I did a lot of thinking about that, especially after Maggie, that independent film with Arnold Schwarzenegger where it was a really slow... Um, turning of the zombie going from uh, you know a person who's infected to becoming a zombie they really slow that prog uh, progression down and I like that I enjoyed the fact that they showed that different aspect of it and there's a good example of you know taking uh, something that we've seen a lot and radically making it different by just slowing down how a person turns from normal into a zombie. I think the creepiest and most standout moment in that movie though, however, I think it wasn't a fantastic movie. I do give them credit for what they did. But the part that stand out the most is when she smelled another human being and she thought she was smelling, I think it was her stepmom, cooking like a, a home cooked meal. And I think that element there was just creepy and great and I love it. And again, it's a perfect example of taking something that's been done to death and putting a new spin on it just by slowing down how they turn. However, I'm not utilizing anything like that. There will be, let me see, in and out of consciousness, there will be a part of getting sick that is similar to that, but it's not zombie human again, zombie human again. It's not that at all. The girl with the bow reminds me of Daryl and Michonne had a kid. Yeah, I think that might have been because of the poncho. The girl we just showed off, it was a rough sketch. Uh, and the only reason the poncho was there is because the girl is Native American, so try to put some of those elements in it. And don't worry, with those rough sketches, uh, a lot of those aren't the finished product, 
so chances are we're going to have something more refined and touched up when we come out with Crow, which is the Native American girl with the, the outfit. So anyway, that looks like it's it. We had four videos. Thank you very much for all your questions. You know, just looking at the numbers and the stats already and comparing them to social media activity of comics that are already out there being published by, you know, Image Comics or other publishers. Uh, I am very thrilled by how much interest and activity revolves around dead living. And although there's definitely going to be problems, especially with the popularity of The Walking Dead, um, we're definitely going to run into a lot of the people out there who are just going to go against it because The Walking Dead is so popular, and that's all we need right now. I personally disagree. I think if someone wants to make a zombie story out there and they're saying, I want to, I want to come out with something that's unique and different from that in a way, uh, we shouldn't just focus on anything that is similar. You know, and we can do that with anything. I mean, look at The Last of Us. When The Last of Us was first promoted, you could have came up to it and said, nope, it's another zombie thing, it's a zombie game, it's just a copy of The Walking Dead. And I'm sure there's people out there who did that. Well, afterwards, playing the game, looking at the story, looking at how they created this, they took some things that were done before, they took some things that are new, they took some things that are in real life, they mixed them. Basically, it's like a Bruce Lee philosophy. I remember in one of his books, he said, you take what you can use, you discard what you can't, and you add what's originally your own. And with that formula, hopefully people will see that this is something new we're trying to do. And it's not just a copy of The Walking Dead, which essentially would be a complete and utter fail because, again, how popular it is. And essentially, it's just about a group of people who were surviving the zombies in the first few seasons. After that, they're surviving people. The story I'm trying to do with this comic, different from that, you know what I mean? But there are similarities there. There will be people surviving zombies in the beginning. There will be people surviving maybe some bandits or robbers or people who are just desperate trying to get away out of a bad situation. You will run across those similarities. But the overall theme of the fact that this is a controlled collapse of society makes this story dramatically different than what's happening in Walking Dead. Essentially, some of these people are being exterminated and a virus is used against them. And using that as the twist, using that as something I can help grab people's attention and say, listen, this is something we haven't seen before. I'm trying to ground, ground it in reality, as well as give us those sci-fi elements we like. I'm really hoping that people will step up and support it if they like it. And again, hold off on some of the similarities because as the story progresses, you will truly see with each coming issue how just very different this world is from The Walking Dead. All right, thank you very much for all the support. Like I said, I couldn't have asked for more. Every day we get more and more support for this project, and I'm thrilled. The first issue is now complete, and we're moving forward to see about getting it colored, getting it printed, see about setting up some kind of email service where People who are definitely 100% interested in buying this, they can notify us and let us know so we can get a more exact or a more accurate estimate. And we will let you know in coming updates. Again, thank you very much for supporting this project. Without you, this project would not have gotten where it is. And if it does succeed, even a little bit in the future, we're not asking for this to be a new TV series on HBO. We're not asking anybody for this to be, you know, the new king of zombie. I am completely fine with this staying underground as long as we can tell a story every month. You know, that's all I ask for. If that's as far as it goes, I'll be the happiest man on earth, <laughs> you know. Put your thoughts and opinions down in that comment box. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I'm done talking. It's your turn. Subscribe now.